Welcome, everyone, to hour number two of Talk Back, brought to you by Nissan and Hyundai of Missoula under new management offering. Rebates, discounts, 0% financing got a huge selection of inventory. Also brought to you by Selway Armory on Stockyard Road. More guns and ammo than anyone in Missoula at the best prices in Montana. Montana's premier firearms dealer. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We are we have special guests in the studio. We're going to be talking about veganism versus uh, eating meats and uh, having a, a different sort of a diet. So this is a this is a conversation I don't think we've ever had on this show before. So you know, it's something that's come up during open phones conversation, right. but we haven't had a real conversation. I think really it's going to be kind of an I, I would assume an ethical conversation, right. a debate about right. ethics and sure. and philosophy, which is something that pops up here and there throughout conversations mm-hmm. on Talkback. But we haven't really just devoted a show to it, well, uh, other than we had a philosophical debate or discussion about a month ago on the ability of science to access truth about God right. um, during the Veritas Forum. So uh, that was actually out of that particular show, we had a discussion. I was like, we should have more conversations sure. like that. And uh, Swazig, who was here for that particular uh, discussion, uh, decided, hey, let's talk about veganism. Okay. And uh, so I said, yeah, let's do it. So uh, today we have the privilege of having two University of Montana philosophy professors in studio. We have uh, Swazig Lubihan and uh, Albert Borgman in studio. They'll be discussing uh, the issues around veganism. I, I guess I'll start off with a big question. And the question is, um, what is the foundation of any kind of, 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 of ethics about veganism? I, I guess I, maybe, maybe the better question is this. When it comes to veganism, is your veganism, Swazig, you are a vegan, is that right? Is your veganism built on an idea that you must eat this way to not cause harm to animals? Or is it because you don't want to take rights away from animals or, or, or what kind of foundation do you have behind your veganism? Or does it just taste good? <laughs> right. Or, or do you just like celery? Uh, I do like celery, but I do like meat. It tastes very wonderful. Especially cheese is the hardest actually to give up. Um, uh, so the, the, I guess the most, there are many ways in which um, there are many principles behind the fact that I am not eating meat or any kind of animal product. Uh, I guess the most fundamental one would be that I don't want to inflict pain for pleasure. And meat is pleasurable, but it's pleasure and it inflicts pain. And I don't want to do that. Okay. So, so the, the idea is, is when you uh, say go in, into the grocery store and there's this huge meat counter and there's chicken and beef and, you know, buffalo or whatever it might be, you, you don't think of it as a commodity that we eat that is part of our general life. You look at, you look at it as, as the suffering that these animals had to go through in order to provide me with sustenance. That's right. And, and that that's not fair. And perhaps even more importantly, in your opinion, it's not necessary, right? It's not necessary, yes. Okay. It's not necessary. I would take pleasure out of eating that meat. But again, inflicting pain for pleasure, I think, is wrong. Let's, uh, let's I'm sorry, go ahead. We had a question from Jim. Basically, we need a definition in terms. Not sure. everyone knows what veganism Absolutely. is. Yes. So let's start with that. What is your definition of veganism? All right, so uh, veganism uh, consists in not eating any animal product. Um, so that includes meat, obviously, but I would uh, include all the vegetarian. The vegetarian don't eat meat. But vegetarians usually eat eggs and dairy product. So the vegan doesn't eat eggs and dairy product. And then there is uh, additional uh, issues about honey and possibly yeast. Uh, so the most radical vegan, and all of this is going to be on the continuum, obviously. Uh, the most uh, radical vegan is not going to eat even yeast because it's, it's an organism. So are you Bernie Sanders vegan or Hillary vegan? Like, how <laughs> radical I do are eat you? Yeast. A, okay. <laughs> I'm still not sure about honey. Uh, I'd like to turn the floor over to Albert, uh, give you a chance to chime in. So when you hear uh, her basis for her veganism, are there any things that drive questions from you? I think veganism would be ethically required if it were impossible to produce eggs, cheese, milk, and even meat without inflicting pain. And as it is, we inflict tons of pain on chickens and pigs and cattle. So uh, I think the the challenge that vegans uh, pose to omnivores like me, 
is uh, that we omnivores should agree with them that pain has to be eliminated. And I think it can be. All right. So how, how do you feel about that? I mean, how, how, how do you butcher something without it in, without inflicting pain? I guess, is that a question? So, um, yeah, so the happy cow argument, that's basically the <laughs> but that meaning only happy cows. Uh, sure. Um, so first off, what I would say is that if, so first off, the first thing to say is that, yes, as, as it is, we inflict tons of pain. And that's exactly what Albert said. 97% uh, of the meat we eat, Americans' meat, is coming from the uh, farming industry. Um, now, in an, an ideal world, we could conceive of you know, very happy cows uh, having a decent life. And, um, and I, once the student asked me, you know, if you find a roadkill, would you eat it? And then the answer is yes. Right? If, if, if that thing is already dead, you know, it's, I'm not inflicting pain. It's already dead. So, so a cow could die of old age and you eat Exactly. It. So okay. I, I would be fine with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, now, the, the next question is, can we actually do that? Can we actually check on, and there are tons of people say, oh, are you, I, I buy. And it's going to be better if you try not to avoid the farm uh, industry and to go for more, you know, more local, the farmer down your road or something like this, or, and we can talk about hunting, obviously, uh, something like this, um, uh, something like hunting, um, some kind of ethical hunting, uh, then I think that there is there is room for eating meat. Uh, the dairy industry, the, the, the milk is harder. Eggs is definitely a possibility. You can have happy hens. Uh, if you don't force them to have eggs during the winter, you don't exhaust them uh, within two years. Um, it sounds to me like you've shifted the debate from being a debate in defense of veganism to being an ethical tirade against the industry that we have to support omnivorism in America. Tell you what, we're, we're up against a break, so go ahead and make your point, and we'll go to the break. Uh, that, that was basically the, the point. I think it's easier to defend the argument against the way that we raise meat in America than it is to defend veganism as an idea in general. Right. So the, oh, we'll, sorry, we'll, I'm ahead. sorry. Well, we'll come right back. And we also have Catherine on the line. We have two lines open. You can participate in this debate. What do you think? Uh, we, we well, This is Montana. I mean, we, we like meat. We got beef. We've got pork. We've got chicken. We've got... KFC right down the road here. No, I'm just seven two one twelve ninety is our number. We'll be right back. Hey, okay, we're back on the talk back. Seven two one twelve ninety is our number. And joining us here in the studio is Swazig Labeon, who is a uh, professor, a, 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 a tenured professor of philosophy at the University of Montana. Professor Emeritus Albert Borgman also joining us from the philosophy department. Let's get right to the phone and uh, let's get Catherine on the line. Catherine, you have a question for one of our guests. Uh, yeah, a couple of them, okay? Um, Easter Sunday uh, at St. Patrick's uh, Cathedral in New York, uh, they, you know, they had their high mass, and it was uh, rudely interrupted, shall we say, by violent animal rights protesters. The reason they did it was because ham is a, um, a, a usual uh, Easter dinner it's for a, a staple, lot of people. Right. Yeah. right. So they decided to interrupt the mass, and they did it rather precipitously, <laughs> and scared the living daylights out of a lot of people who promptly ran out of St. Pat's expecting a terrorist attack. Uh, you, I was wondering why you hadn't mentioned that at all. Anyway, um, the, uh, uh, so, that, so m one of my questions is, do you approve or disapprove of that kind of act activism to get your point across as far as veganism or animal rights or um, vegetarianism, and do you also approve then of forcing, using the, the rule of law regulations to wean people off of um, animal uh, products in all cases? That's the first question. The second one, um, humans eat death to survive. We always have. Um, dentation is designed for an omnivorous um, uh, excuse me, omnivorous diet. And we don't only just kill animals, we also kill plants. We rip them out of the ground and we rip them apart. And we eat seeds and nuts that are the fetal tissue of plants. And so we kill to survive. That's the, that's the, the law of nature. Um, we also kill all sorts of small animals and insects and bacteria millions upon millions of them every day in farming. So 
would you, how far would you take veganism, or how far do you think it should be taken? And again, referring back to the, would you want to pass laws to um, mm-hmm. limit people's ability to eat what they want? Okay. Thanks, Catherine. Appreciate the sure. call. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Swazik, let's, uh, obviously those, that was directed more toward you, so what do you think? Uh uh, well, thank you very much for your questions. Um, those are all good questions. About activism first, um, I am not an aggressive vegan, um, mostly not because I don't believe strongly in what I do, but mostly because I think it's actually counterproductive. Uh, I think that um, uh, talking nicely to other people is probably the best uh, the best way to uh, engage other people and to share different views. I've learned a lot since I've been in Montana. Uh, about various things. You know, I came as a meat eater and a hunting uh, hater, and I turned into a vegan, and um, I have a lot of respect for a lot of hunters. So I changed a lot my mind, and that's through listening. And I think that's a way better thing to do rather than uh, to run into a church uh, and disrupt uh, uh, a mass. Um, in terms of the law, I, I think that some law, certainly not the law should not prevent people to eat what they want, as you phrased it. Now, whether the law should uh, impose some uh, minimal regulations on um, on less suffering, I think that would be a great thing. I think the fact that uh, you know, pigs uh, are unable to move for months at a time um, t- uh, with their piglets uh, on the concrete next to them, I think that's just disgusting, and we should, uh, that, that, that in several states have, um, have banned and those crates, and I think it's a good thing. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there should be a law preventing you from eating meat. That would be just, I mean, I don't even know that that would be conceivable and not um, something we want uh, to happen. This is not what democracy is about. Uh, finally, about the survival, uh, so we kill to survive. You say, sure, we kill plants, and that's true. Plants are forms of life, and that's a great question. Where do you put uh, the limit between what you think is um, uh, uh, okay to kill and not okay to kill, uh, the way I conceive of it is in terms of sentience, is whether you feel they can feel pain or not. And that's an, that's an empirical question. What kind of um, physiological uh, 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 features you need to feel pain, the way I solve that issue, and that's something that people solve in different ways, the way I solve that issue is that if something has a brain, then I'm, sure, I'm, pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure that um, that uh, being is feeling pain, in which case I find it, um, I have to take that into account if I want to harm it. I don't think I harm the plant, uh, but there are some other things to say about plants, but I'm, I, I'm taking too much time. Um, but I don't think I harm the plants just by uh, ripping, uh, ripping it off uh, the ground because it doesn't have a brain, it doesn't have a nervous system, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have the ability to feel pain. Okay, Dr. Borgman, what, uh, what are your thoughts on the issues that were brought up by our caller? Um, I entirely agree with uh, Swazik. And the important point that she makes is that rather than the vegans fighting the omnivores and, <laughs> and vice versa, we should look for common ground where, where we uh, can do constructive things. And uh, uh, reducing the pain that is inflicted on, on animals is a good thing. It's a good thing in many ways. Not all, it's not only good for the animals, it's also, it makes uh, meat more expensive. That's a good thing. People should eat less of it. And things are happening. Um, certain companies refuse to uh, buy eggs from uh, producers where the uh, uh, chickens are caged. Sure. So that's a good thing. And, and more and more uh, farmers are, are, and, and ranchers are raising their animals uh, without using the chemicals and that, that are so damaging to, uh, to humans and to babies and that sort of yeah. thing. So, yeah, and, go ahead, John. And grass-fed beef, you know, is something we should support. Sure. Um, I wanted to push you on the last thing that Catherine had asked, and that was about laws. And um, I guess it goes back to my very first question. Uh, a lot of the defense of your position has so far has been, and I'm speaking to Swazik here, um, and maybe also to Albert, but uh, that uh, it because it causes harm, it's bad. So during the break, you had mentioned the word slave while talking about certain animals. And that doesn't sound so much about a harm question, but more of a rights question. Do you believe that animals have rights? Um, 
It depends what you mean by rights, but yes, I do. I, I, if, they, they deserve more consideration. If you believe that animals have rights, isn't it the just function of government to protect rights? Absolutely, yes. So why would you not support laws? That would, would protect a, rights. I would support laws that protect animals to uh, to not suffer absolute torture their entire life. So you like the crate for you do cages, promote the, yeah you absolutely. do promote laws what, what, what for can, against uh, eating meat. Some legislation, right? Some legislation to protect to make at least. Um, I don't think it's reasonable to say we're going to pass a law that forbids from e uh, people from eating meat. Uh, that's what Keith. Catholics I'm not talking do. about practicality here. Right. We're oh, in okay. a philosophy discussion. <laughs> 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 I'm asking, ideally, do you think that governments eventually, well, utopian time, right, eventually should mandate that we don't eat meat? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Because it seems to me that that's the logical conclusion of your basics. Well, philosophically speaking, we have to take a break. So, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. I have to be the uh, philosophical sheriff here. So, And we also have all three lines full. We have Ron, Kerry, and Gregan, who all want to visit with you, our, our guests, and uh, join in the debate, sir. So we'll, we'll be right back. And if you can't get through on the phones, which you can't right now, uh, you can make your comment on our Facebook page. And we'll be right back. All right, talk back or rolls right along. 721-1290 is our number. We're going to get to all three of our phone calls in a moment. But you had mentioned just a minute ago, John, that uh, the the logical stair steps of, of what uh, of what Swazig was talking about could lead to legislation, right? I think that uh, she would be required with the fundamentals that she has to admit that in her ideal government, in the you know a utopian government, would restrict the eating of meat. Um, so. I, I tend to agree with that, but I would say that government functions in a certain way, and usually legislation is passed when the, um, at least some of the population is not totally opposed to it, right? So if you think about how rights have been uh, evolving, so you think about um, uh, it's most recently LGBT, before that uh, African Americans, um, uh, so how do rights get to be so you're recognized. you're talking about the evolution of rights, right? Uh, yeah. And so in the, in the, I think even in my philosophical YouTube and world, I have to take into account that things are changing and that people will have to come to recognize at least partially the uh, rights of animals before any kind of legislation could be passed. Okay. Let's get to the phones. And uh, folks have been waiting quite a while. Ron, you are on TalkBack. Go ahead. Hi. Um, you know, back in the 70s, there were some simple but pretty amazing experiments done on plants. And they found that plants, like all life, are totally aware. Plants feel pain, and they also communicate it. And uh, one experiment they did, they took two plants. They shipped one plant out to the West Coast, and near the plant that was uh, uh, the control uh, situation there. Uh, they poured some brine shrimp into boiling water, and that plant responded immediately to the pain of the shrimp dying. But the amazing thing is that the plant on the west coast responded at exactly the same time. Hmm. Now, now real, real quick, we got a lot of calls, so can you make, ask your question very quickly, Ron? Go ahead. Yeah, why do these vegans think that Killing and eating plants is any different than okay. killing and eating animals. Okay, thank you very much. So, Swazik, uh, what do you think about that? Um, as I said before, there is a continuum, and obviously all forms of life are going to have interesting aspects. Um, that uh, We also know that trees communicate in certain ways. Uh, if you stab a tree, then all the trees around are going, not only that tree is going to um, have some kind of reaction, but all the trees around are going to have the same reaction to protect themselves basically by um, having some kind of substance coming out. Um, does it count as feeling pain? We don't know, right? Um, so as I said, uh, feeling pain is a special kind Kind of thing. Um, now, you know, if I if I uh, if if you have an alarm system on your car and I slam your car, the car is going to uh, yell at me, right? But nobody is thinking that your car is feeling pain. Uh, so, of course, there are some questions about when it is exactly that there is there's there's mo moment of sentience that's coming up. Now, just because the the the, the line the frontier is vague doesn't mean that there is no difference. There is clear cases in both cases. Your car doesn't feel pain. We do. Um, Albert, what do you think? Yeah, I was going to ask. Maybe we should get a def definition of pain. 
Well, I don't think we need the definition of pain. It's so obvious when yeah, a person does yeah, feel yeah. pain or right. a, an animal. Uh, uh, and I think the, the real question is the one that uh, Swazik asked, uh, what does it take for something to feel pain? And I think a brain, that's, that's a good uh, marker for <laughs> feeling pain and not pain. And uh, to go back to rights, I think uh, plants do have rights. So you should not uh, cut a ponderosa pine, a mature ponderosa pine, just to try out your uh, chainsaw. I think that's wrong. But the rights of living uh, organisms come, they're graded. And so, therefore, they can be overridden for good reason. So, if you need to cut a ponderosa, a mature ponderosa, because that's the only way you can build a house, yeah, you can do that. And, but don't uh, just do it for fun. Yeah, and okay. the same applies to, to plants. You can't okay. kill them. All right, go ahead, John. I, I want to follow up on the last caller, because I think that it really is the nature of pain that's at issue here, because you feel justified in killing vegetable simply because it can't remember the pain. Yet this structure has DNA, it reacts, it can communicate to other structures that are the same, it can learn and grow from its environment and the way that it's impacted by these things, it's suffering in other words. If you cut a heart into the tree, it's, it's possible for the next generation to learn from how that, uh, that, that, that outside was damaged. So you have learning, you have growth, you have suffering. The only I element- I think you have suffering. The, well, see, that's the thing. We may not have angst, uh, to use a philosophical term, or we might not have uh, suffering that we no, can there's remember. No processing. There's but we, no processing. So there is. There's biological processing. Yeah, but not through a uh, central nervous system and uh, a, a brain that that produces. So you have feelings, and then you have the emotions that are uh, that are processed out of it. So just because a, a species doesn't think out how it wants to react to pain, doesn't mean it doesn't experience pain. Well, if. Uh, there is a very interesting and controversial issue now with uh, fetal pain. And uh, when does a fetus begin to feel pain? And in, in this case, I think brain is not quite enough because certain behaviors are difficult to interpret, whether they're brain or just sort of an unthinking, unfeeling reaction. And uh, I think a lot of mischief is being done with <laughs> me and not be to the liking of your listeners, uh, under the heading of fetal pain. And, you know, just making uh, abortion and uh, more difficult. So you would defend the ponderosa tree from being killed, but not the fetus? No. The, the answer is exactly the same, John. And that is... It is not. There's a fundamental is. difference, I think. And that is in the well, nature of these finish. two let things. Let me finish, John. Yes, sure. uh, the reason is the same. Uh, fetuses at a certain stage can be killed for good reason. And uh, 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 common sense tells us that the uh, St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that. And uh, it just makes, makes sense. Okay. And, and I, can, I can follow up on this. I'm sorry. Go okay, ahead. well, the, we're up against a break. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it, this, is, this is really getting very interesting here, kind of moving away from <laughs> <laughs> veganism versus non-veganism. Anyway, but Carrie and Greg, and I promise we'll get your phone calls. This is just such a rich conversation. We will get to you just as quick as we can, so stay with us. Okay, we're back on TalkBack. 721-1290 is our number. We have all three lines humming. Swazig Lubion is a uh, tenured professor of philosophy at the University of Montana, professor emeritus uh, Albert Bergman. Dr. Albert Bergman joining us as well. And let's get right to the phones because we want to get them on. Uh, Carrie, thank you for holding. You're on. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Interesting topic. I was going to follow the same lines. As I understand it, kind of the line of demarcation you have for, for what is food is not whether or not an animal has an instinct of survival, because I argue that every cellular being in the world has an instinct of survival, even your smallest bacteria, but whether it can cognitively understand pain and understand that that is a bad thing and try to get away from it. Is, is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure that understand is correct, but uh, definitely feel pain, uh, uh, process what we call pain. Yes, yeah, so how, is right. a sentient well, being. Well, I apologize. I'm on the road. You're so fine. Can't. You're fine. No, I, mean, I, I can't mark the study, but I'm an avid Montana fisherman like I've been for years. So my, my 
question goes towards fish, and I know that it seems like a living organism like anything else, but there was a study, and I can't, I can't reference it because I'm on the road, but it, I, it caught my eye because I was a fisherman. There was an eight-year study by, I think, a university in Germany that after eight years of studying came to the conclusion that fish, while they have an instinct of survival, do not actively feel pain. If that if you read that study and agreed with it, would that mean that you'd have an interest maybe at eating fish? Okay, I'm going to let you go. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Go ahead. What do you think? Uh, if I was agreeing with that study, then the answer would be yes, I would be fine eating fish. Now, that study is controversial. There are different studies uh, calling... Uh, 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 um, about uh, the ability of fish to feel pain. Uh, there are even studies that uh, seem to suggest that fish, the fish feel more pain than other animals. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's, highly, uh, it's highly, uh, highly controversial. In those cases, I would say that the precautionary principle tells me that because there is a risk, a high risk, that I do inflict pain when I eat fish, then I won't do it. What about other forms of meat that don't include brains, bivalves, uh, mussels, things like that? Right. Um, and I had to think about that, and um, I, uh, from time to time, do eat scallops and, and mussels because they don't have uh, they don't have brains. And again, and back to uh, what Albert was saying, I said, yeah, the, the so first off, the plants do have rights. I agree totally with, with. So if I hike out there and I see, and I have no problem walking on rocks, uh, but if I see uh, some flowers, I will try not to walk on it. If I walk on it because I fell. Uh, that's okay, right? But um, but if I can avoid walking on that flower, I'll do it. And I'll tell my kids, by, by the way, that it's not okay to, to walk on the flowers and destroy the flowers. So I do think that there are those moral considerations, but the moral considerations go higher and higher as the organisms get, get more complex. Dr. Bergman, uh, we've been ignoring you. Go ahead. I would love to hear what you think about the, the last question and perhaps what she referenced. Uh, in, in the controversial cases... Uh, um, I think caution is advised, but I think uh, fishing is okay. <laughs> and it, it, uh, well, it, it uh, gets me to another is, issue. Is, and is that, that is, just because you fish? I, I used to. But <laughs> okay. th there's a larger okay. point. Okay. And, and the right. point is that many of our eating habits have a deep cultural tradition. And if we can save it, we should save it. Okay. And so... You know, a river runs through it. Sure. So. <laughs> what about uh, whale harvesting for indigenous peoples? Uh, what about other forms of eating that might cause increased amount of pain, eating animals alive, things like this? Some cultures have these attributes. Would you support those because they're culturally acceptable or have been? No, I, I, I think, uh, but again, that's a very general question. Do you accept everything that's been part of some culture, you know, including... Uh, Human sacrifice? No. Yeah. yeah. So I think there are, again, common sense considerations that allow us to determine in traditions what's acceptable and what not. Okay, let's get, let's get another call in and we'll do as many on as we can. Greg, you're on. Go ahead, please. Good morning this morning. Uh, here's a, a very simple question in my mind. Uh, if you wish to have happy animals, would you uh, eliminate fences? Is that if 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 we if animals have a, a pecking order, so to speak, you would have to protect the chickens from the wolf and the wolf from the lion, and the lion from the bear. And so, in order to make everybody happy, you would have to eliminate fences. And so that's my question. And okay. thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the call. So, uh, a little philosophical question, Albert. We'll go with you first. What do you think about that? Yeah, you need fences. If you have a house, you have a fence, right? <laughs> You exclude certain animals. And uh, again, you know, you should have fences that, are, um, that don't inflict needless harm. You shouldn't have fences that are too restrictive to the movement well, I, of animals. I, I, think, I think the greater question he was asking is, do you take it upon yourself as a higher form of being to protect the deer from the wolf or to protect the, the, the wolf from the mountain lion? Or, you see what, I think that's what he was getting at. Well, no, no, no. Uh, I think because that's uh, a natural order of things, right? Yeah, right, right. We we have to intervene. You know, game management is just a, a duty now that we have, and there are lots of difficult questions. Okay, uh, all right. So, real real quick, Swanson, what do you think about that? 
Yeah, is, there are some arguments about this, about the fact that we should uh, try to uh, decrease the suffering of wild animals. Um, and uh, I, I would, yeah, again, I think that common sense tells, tells us here that, uh, I mean, clean up our own mess first, right? Uh, we made a mess of, of ourselves uh, with all that factory farming, so let's clean up that first and take care of the uh, billions of animals we torture and kill every year before we try uh, thinking about the deer. The deer has its own life, it's an autonomous animal, uh, does what it does as a deer, and the mountain lion does as well. Um, if the mountain lion attacks my kids, I'm going to attack the mountain lion, right? Uh, so, um, and, that, and that's totally fine with me. Now the question is whether we, sh we um, as a uh, moral being, uh, think it's okay to inflict considerable amount of pain to uh, sentient beings just because we like the taste of meat. Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll come right back at Emmett, and we have uh, one line open, 721-1290 is our number. Interesting conversation. We'd love to have you be a part of it for another 18 minutes or so, and we'll be right back. Okay, thanks for joining us here on Talkback this morning. And we have uh, Swazig Lubion, who's a tenured professor of philosophy at the University of Montana. Also from the philosophy department, uh, uh, Professor Emeritus Dr. Albert Bergman also joining us. So let's get right back to the phones and say hello to Emmett. Emmett, thanks for calling. What's up? Oh, thanks for taking my call. Well, a few points. I agree with the guests on only. I'm a huge meat eater myself. I love meat. I always have. They're, the only thing I do agree with them, um, um, the two guesses, we do need, I think, more humane laws for animals as far as how we kill the animals in the slaughterhouses. I don't like the torture of pigs or, you know, cows. We can do it a lot more humanely, and I think we will include increase the quality of the meat that we have on our tables. We can still have a lot of meat, but have better laws to have more hu humane ways. However... Biologically, if you want to talk about philosophy, biologically, we are omnivores because we have eye teeth. And if we were meant to be just herbivores, we wouldn't have them. And second of all, we need meat to be healthy. We, I, at least for me, I function a lot better mentally and emotionally, and I have a lot better health when I eat meat whether than I don't. I mean, when I went to Who Hot Mongolian Grill yesterday after eating a lot of meat, I felt psychologically and physically wonderful. There are other um, sources of protein and other foods like nuts and others, but you just don't get the health benefits that a human needs you know, as far as meat. Meat is totally different than other sources of protein. Okay, Emmett, I, I, want, to, I want to get our guests in to weigh in on what you've said, okay? Thanks. Certainly. Appreciate the call. Dr. Borgman, go ahead. What do you think about what Emmett's just said about, uh, yeah, you feel better when well, you eat meat. I mean, I, I'm an omnivore, but I think uh, to a vegan, Emmett's question, if I may say so, is just a softball, you know, because here is Swazik, you know, <laughs> as healthy and as, le as athletic as can be. She's so, and she's not eating meat. And uh, so, um, as I said, I, one thing I like about meat is the culture that goes with it. Uh, and, but I think we should take to heart what the vegans tell us about uh, needless in, infliction of pain. So uh, I, I'm really answering on behalf okay. of Okay, all right. So Swazi, uh, Swazi. You, you, you go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I see you stand up there ready to hit that softball, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> It's, uh, it's, um, I mean, I understand why you think that's the case. Um, so about the biological argument, we have teeth, right? Well, you don't have the teeth that your dog have, has, and um, we also have some flat teeth to, to eat vegetables. And so, and, and first off, and in a second, sorry, um, there are tons of things that nature, you know, uh, would, we would be uh, able to do uh, uh, given our nature and that we don't know, uh, do, right? It's probably very natural for men to be, um, to do uh, a lot of fooling around uh, instead of being a fiddle to their wives in, in the context of marriage. Do we think it's okay to do it? No. Uh, so whether it's our nature or not is a, is a not necessarily a good um, reason to make it a moral uh, behavior. Um, then second, about the health, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but all, all the studies show the opposite of what you just said. 
uh, that you can be perfectly healthy. Um, and I actually do, did a lot of research because I turned vegan when I was pregnant with my second kid. And my husband came to me and said, you better know what you're doing there because you've got a little being. It's not only you. And since then, he's been after me because I'm still nursing that little kid. And um, he's still after me and said, you better know what you're doing. I spent three days in my basement researching everything. And I can tell, I mean, I could spend an hour explaining to you how um, the benefits of a vegan uh, diet over uh, a meat-based uh, diet. Do you, do you take mineral supplements then in order to I, counter... To fill in what the vegetables don't provide? So the only thing that, that the plant-based diet doesn't uh, provide is B12, right? Um, so how do you get B12? You can take a supplement. You can uh, also, um, I, um, I, as I said, I eat mussels and uh, scallops. They have plenty of B12. Uh, and there's also the, B the, 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 the joke, but I'm not going to make that joke here, the vegan joke. Uh, and then... Uh, <laughs> And um, uh, and then uh, the uh, other way you can uh, get your B12, and that, that I do in the spring, you know, right now, is by uh, I, I do uh, have, uh, get some eggs from someone I know is having is is raising uh, hands in an absolutely amazing way, where I see they're actually rescued hands, and they come in all kinds of sizes and colors. They're really weird eggs and very tasty. Okay, let's let's get another call in before we have to take our last break. Richard, you're on. Go ahead. Morning, everybody. Good morning. I was going to ask, just out of curiosity, I hope this wasn't going to be too deep, but I was going to say that, you know, they call the Earth, you know, like a living planet, and but it's okay for us to cut down trees. I've done that. I eat meat, and I drive vehicles. But, you know, you think about the oil and the water and everything else that's in the Earth. Why is it okay for us to go ahead and drill holes and extract all this for our own self and and i'm pretty sure your guests probably drive vehicles and do everything and you know does earth not feel it that's a very good question thanks uh, so uh, either one of you want, want to tackle that so dr borgman uh, or <laughs> it's earth, a toughie earth does not feel it but that does not mean that we should deal with earth as we as we do and any way we like so i think there's an important point that uh, so, Richard is so, bringing so, up, so, and what, that what is, we should be, we should be respectful and careful of the earth. What do you think of the philosophy of stewardship, of, of being a good steward of the earth? Exactly. It's now the earth is entrusted to us in a way that it's never been, and so uh, we have to be stewards. We have to be conscious of the tasks that that. Are now upon us. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break here. It's a one minute break. It'll be our final one. We have about eight minutes left in the program. I I hope we can get all of our callers in. We will do the best we can. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back. <laughs> oh, the stuff you guys don't get to hear. Okay, um, let's uh, let's real quickly get another caller in. Candy, real quickly, can you state your question and uh, we'll move on. Go ahead. Yes, uh, the topic was open earlier about babies in the womb not feeling pain, um, but that's not true. They, in a saline uh, abortion, they insert a needle in the womb to uh, insert saline and kill the baby by burning it alive. And that is a fact. And so to say that a baby doesn't uh, feel pain is wrong because it moves away from the needle. So we are doing human sacrifice. And how do these people feel about that? Okay, uh, real, real quickly. So, Dr. Borkman, do you want to jump on that real quick or not? Uh, well, babies do feel pain, but when is a fetus a baby? That's the, the difficult question. And like many things that come in degrees, it's difficult to draw the line, and we have to draw a line. So I think um, a, f a fertilized egg that's hardly visible to the naked eye is not a baby. And, uh, but then, you know, in the, in, in the last trimester, there's a baby. Mm -hmm. So where do you draw the line? Okay. Right, let's, that's let's, difficult. Let's get another caller in, and this is Misty. Hi, Misty, you're on. Go ahead. Hi, I just have a few things. I want to let all the ladies out there know that um, at Christmas time, I was about my heaviest weight, and I decided to go vegan. Um, 
cold turkey, full vegan, no dairy products, no animal Cold, cold turkey, get it? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I, um, I take in 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. I do not restrict. I've lost 30 pounds since Christmas, and I feel the best I've ever felt in Good my life. You. I have two toddlers. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to bring up was one of your previous callers said something about humane slaughter of the animals, as if that was better. Is there a humane way to slaughter a human? Is there a humane way to, to, to slaughter anything that lives and breathes and enjoys their, their life here on planet Earth? I really don't think so. And with all the land that's being cleared for cattle and all the land also that's being cleared for crops to feed the cattle, we're losing our planet. We are stewards of the planet, and we are doing a horrible, horrible, horrible job. Okay, thanks. And for- I would encourage people to go on YouTube and look up Pale Blue Dot and just check it out and, and go from there because okay. it says a lot about who we are as a race and how we are connected to the planet, and All it right. is a living, breathing thing. Thank you so much. we got to run. Appreciate that. And Myrna, go ahead. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to uh, observe that all animals die... Everything dies, no matter how well you treat it. And after all, we have a reasoning brain. The people that want to be vegans should be, should be, and the people that want to eat meat should have the right to do that. Nobody should force anybody to do anything. Okay. And that's my thoughts on the subject. Thank you very much. So, uh, go, go ahead, John. What do you think? Well, I think that's really the basis of it, right? We're all judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to eating and feeding ourselves. And that's scary, right? I mean, don't you think so, Swazik? There's a lot of ethical responsibility behind yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, do we have the right uh, to be immoral? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a really reasonable thing to say. Um, look, there are some moral issues in our lives, and we made decisions on basis of moral principles or uh, and moral uh, uh, views. Um, do I have the right to force uh, uh, you not to eat meat? Absolutely not. Uh, but... Uh, I think that every individual should think uh, about the ethical issues in, uh, uh, involved and also the environmental issues that uh, were just uh, mentioned by Misty. Mm-hmm. Um, it is uh, it is simply the case that, uh, you know, going vegan is also extremely environmental friendly for uh, in terms of uh, uh, the waste uh, that is related to uh, the cattle industry is, is tremendous. And so um, if it's not for the animals, do it, do it for the environment. Um, and if you want to go a little bit, you know, eat less meat, that's that's great. I mean, I have to say, as I said, I'm not an aggressive vegan. Um, and what I want to tip is people being aware, more aware, because the farming industry is trying to hide us, all of this from us. And we should be aware of what we're doing. We should be aware of where the meat comes from and um, and make decisions on an individual basis on, on what what we think is right. So, Dr. Borgman, I want to give you the last minute and a half. So, uh, go ahead. What, what do you think? I'd let you just kind of wrap up as far as philo- philosophically speaking, where you're standing. I admire vegans. I think uh, the more vegans, the better. But the takeaway, I think, is that vegans and, and omnivores like me should cooperate on tasks that we both recognize are important and let not the, our differences stand in the way of those. And especially not sort of make defeating vegans or defeating omnivores the major concern of our lives. So reaching across these divisions and uh, recognizing each other's virtues and accomplishments, I think that's the way to go. Let's just try to get along, right? (laughs) <laughs> right. Not difficult with Albert. <laughs> all right, all right, great. Well, thank you both so much for being with us. This this has been very enlightening. Thank we you. appreciate it. All right, thanks for all of our callers. You guys were great, too. So, John, what's coming up on tomorrow's fabulous radio program? Uh, we'll be talking about medical marijuana. Well, it's, that's right up there. You, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's a plant. It makes you not think. It, it, makes, you not, it, makes, you, it makes you not feel any pain. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I'm sure I'll get some calls on that one. All right, yeah. Anyway, so we, we appreciate all your calls this morning, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, uh, if, you, if you're just coming in at the end of the program and you missed it, it's going to be up on our, uh, our website a little bit later on today in, in the form of a podcast, and you can listen to it, listen to the whole thing, and form your arguments. And the next time we have open phones, you can say, I want to say such and such and so and so. But again, thanks to uh, uh, Swazig Lobion and Professor uh, uh, Albert Borgman for being with us from the University of Montana. Thank you. You guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.